disability that you have. And I think one of the threats right now that's out there really is to the work environment and to the ability to continue to provide um, the work opportunity, not so much for the higher functioning individual, but those that aren't quite as high functioning. And, and we believe that that's just as important as anything else cause, because mm -hmm. I, I think what we see and when you go down there and you talk to them and, and you're around them when they're working, it's the fact that they're doing some meaningful work. Mm -hmm. And they're being a part of the community yeah, and absolutely. participating. They're thrilled wow. to pay taxes. And, they, 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 <laughs> yes. they, and like you said, they, they, they want to participate. They want to be a part yes. of the community. They want to be able to give back and do all the other things. That they, they really can. do. They're no they really do. They really, uh, yep. say, sometimes I say to people, all we do is we make it possible for people to live ordinary lives. It takes sometimes some very extraordinary assistance and extraordinary skill, ability, knowledge to make that happen. But the end result is that people live, are able to live an ordinary life. They have friends, they live apart from their parents if that's what they choose. They, you know, are able to go to, they go to school. We, have a, we also have a school, which I didn't mention. Um, they're able to go to school, they're able to go to work, they're able to bowl, they're able to go to the Kristen Jenoweth concert at Proctor's that's coming up. They just live, they, they just live they grow, they learn, they learn new skills, they learn to cook, they learn to or help the person who's cooking, you know, at whatever level they can. But it's all, you know, when you think of it, it's really pretty ordinary. So, but it's um, a privilege to be able to be a part of making that happen for people. That's well said, and it's, it's, it's wonderful that uh, these things are happening, to know that mm -hmm. uh, someone's out there uh, helping with these things and helping uh, individuals be a part of their community. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, more about the Center for Disability Services. Stay with us. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Live with a human for a while and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she's actually not a morning person. I know she does strange tricks for no treats. I know that water makes her howl like crazy. I even know how the floor stays so clean. She's quick. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? Welcome back to Assembly Update. I am Assembly Member Angelo Santa Barbara, representing the 111th Assembly District. I have uh, two district offices, one in the city of Amsterdam at 1170 Riverfront Center, Phone number there, 518-843-0227. Second district office in the city of Schenectady, 433 State Street. Phone number there, 518-382-2941. And as always, you can reach me by email at santabarbara at assembly.state.ny.us. You can also find me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter at ASM Santa Barbara or on Instagram at Assemblyman Santa Barbara. Welcome back to the show. We have been talking about the Center for Disability Services, and uh, we have two guests today uh, sharing some wonderful information. Uh, Greg Sorrentino, who is the Chief Operating Officer, and Donna Lampkin, Chief Program Officer. Mm -hmm. Thank you both for joining us and for sharing uh, some great information about the organization uh, and all the great things you're doing in our communities. 
Um, we you, we mentioned before the break. We mentioned a school, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we talked about some partnerships. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, the school and some of those partnerships that are also uh, happening uh, with the Center for Disability Services. Oh, as I said, we um, we do have a school that's a uh, five to twenty one year old school that's actually based at, at our site that people think of as the center, the, Manning, the site on Manning Boulevard in Albany. Um, we serve actually two distinct groups of students, really the um, students who have a very, very complex uh, multiple disabilities with a lot of um, medical needs. And then we all, the other group that we serve largely are youngsters who have autism, um, who have particularly um, challenging behaviors related to their autism. So we have two specialties actually at our school. And um, actually, the, the program for the youngsters who have the more physical disabilities takes part in a program for which we are a national model, the Mobility Opportunities via Education, the MOVE program. So and we're, very, we're very proud of that. And we also have a preschool um, where we serve in, at different sites um, throughout the capital region. We have a preschool that serves children who are ages um, three to five. And again, um, we serve children there who have a broader range of disabilities, but again, largely um, have specialties in those um, most profound physical disabilities, as well as the uh, autism areas. So. And we know how important those programs are Absolute, to, uh, yes, to individuals. Well, and I have and a son with autism that yes. I uh, we talked about yes. during the telethon. Yeah. Uh, so seeing it from a as a mm -hmm. legislator and as a parent, mm -hmm. uh, those programs are just invaluable and mm -hmm. really make a difference in changing people's Absolutely. lives. Uh, so we uh, we thank you for running for having that school mm -hmm. and for uh, for uh, helping individuals uh, throughout the community. Uh, we also talked about uh, this doesn't happen uh, with just the Center for Disability Services. You have many partners that uh, that help. Uh, let's let's. Well, we have some interesting partnerships that I think people don't necessarily think about. And we have a partnership actually with RPI's School of Engineering, which we really do enjoy tremendously, where we work with their uh, senior engineering students to we challenge them with problems that may have an engineering solution that our folks face every day and. Uh, the students work to come up with solutions to uh, engineering solutions to those problems. We've been doing this now for several years and actually got an award from the Center for Economic Growth, an Innovations and Technology oh, award from them um, a couple of years ago and then last year got an award from the Cerebral Palsy Associations of New York State for the Innovative an Innovative Program Award. It's really been that's been a really tremendous partnership. And now the Union College School of Engineering has partnered with us and they are also doing the same thing um, with their students. So we have um, stud engineering students in the center now who are engaged with our staff and with the people that we serve. So it's very, it's very enriching on, uh, on both, sides of the, uh, both sides of the picture there. Um, so that's a very important partnership. And then we have, a, so for instance, a partnership with Equinox um, in Albany, an Albany-based organization um, with their domestic violence program where they received a federal grant to work with a disability partner who is us to develop a collaboration to be able to provide um, really excellence in services for um, people who have a d disability um, who may be a victim of domestic violence, which as we know, is, sadly enough, um, people with disabilities are subject to domestic violence at a rate that's high, way higher than the general population. And one of our target groups that we're looking at is the center has an, M we have an MS care center at the center. So that's also one of the that's one of the target groups that we're looking at to really work on building this collaboration to enable people who uh, have MS to live uh, free of domestic violence. But they are particularly rep overrepresented in the um, abuse arena of the domestic. So we have a, a variety of community partners. I think aside from other, you know, organizations that provide just generally provide services to people with disabilities. I think there's many other organizations out there that, because we're in the community and our people right. live in the community, so we're able to really, along with all the other colleges in the area where we have interns from those other schools, really able to have a, uh, a network that uh, extends beyond, I think, what we think of typically as the center. And it's great to have all those partnerships. They're very it important because very it does involve the community at a different <coughs> level, mm -hmm. uh, people Absolutely. working together and participating mm -hmm. towards a common goal. Mm -hmm. Um, Greg, you uh, you mentioned uh, an interesting stat: twenty four hundred employees. Yes, twenty four hundred uh, employees that we employ. And again, you know, it's uh, we often talk about the center being part of our community, and we're, we're part of it in our service structure. We're also part of our employees. We have twenty four hundred people that we employ that work 
that live in the community work you know shop in our our uh, community stores so I think we are a very big substantial part of this community and that's why we appreciate all the support we get you know when you talked about the telethon you talk about other events we do that, that that support we feel like we can give back not only in our services but we can give back by you know employing as many people as we do at various levels yep and that certainly is a significant number uh, of employees mm -hmm. and that, uh, that 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 has an impact we, uh, we want to give out that contact information one more time. Anything we didn't talk about here or, or everything we did talk about as well can be found on your website. Yes. <coughs> um, and as, uh, as uh, along those lines, if someone uh, has some questions and they want to mm -hmm. call, uh, they can also call. And they can find any of your uh, uh, numerous locations uh, in upstate New York and across the state mm -hmm. as well. Uh, that's, that can also be found on your website. So we'll put that up there one more time. If someone wanted to uh, make a donation or uh, they can do that online. They can. Um, is there any other uh, challenges coming up that, that we'd want the audience to know uh, where they can uh, participate or help? Well, I think one of the arenas, uh, Greg Ren referred to uh, work, you know, the world of work. And we are always looking for um, potential employers, um, people who would be interested in um, really talking with us about the possibility of employing some of our individuals who, as Greg said, have, you know, among the hardest working, uh, they have an, a work ethic that, uh, you know, that, uh, that we <coughs> would envy, um, that we would be really glad to talk to any employers. It doesn't have to be a big company, it can be a small company. And I think people don't have to think of it as necessarily employing somebody full time, you know, so I think we would be really glad to talk to people. That's, uh, that's fantastic. About I, I would, jobs. Uh, I would encourage uh, anybody mm -hmm. listening that uh, has an opportunity to mm -hmm. contact uh, uh, Greg or Donna, visit mm -hmm. the website, do a little more research, mm -hmm. ask, the, ask the questions, and, uh, and get involved. And I, mm -hmm. I appreciate uh, you being on the show today, uh, sharing all this information with our, with our audience. Uh, and uh, the telethon was very successful, and I, I, w I was happy to be there and to be a part of it. Yeah, thank you again for being Appreciate you coming. Appreciate, yes, really we do. do. And we thank the community for all they do. Thank you for joining us on Assembly Update. Join us again where we'll talk more about great organizations like the Center for Disability Services.